This lecture is designed to review the planning process to help you create successful programming. We are going to look at the steps of effective programming by looking at three different models or frameworks. The first is Precede Proceed, which was developed by Larry Green. The second is Understanding by Design, which has to do specifically with a developing curriculum and lessons. However, anytime you develop a program, you will be following the same step, steps as used in developing curriculum. And the following is backward mapping or design, which is a way to focus your planning on results or outcomes, which is very important if you're trying to have effective programming. So these are the steps of planning. The first thing we're going to do is conduct a needs assessment. And the purpose of a needs assessment is to help us determine what the population needs and or wants to learn. After we have the needs assessment, we will utilize that information to create goals and objectives for our program. After creating goals and objectives, we will create our assessments that will measure the objectives. Finally, after creating all of this, we will develop activities and strategies that will help you reach your objectives and demonstrate success on your assessments. And finally, we'll be evaluating the process or assessing the process throughout all of the planning steps. So here is the precede proceed model. You should have seen this many times. Going across the top, you have social assessment, epidemiological assessment, behavioral and environmental assessment, educational and ecological assessment, policy assessment, implementation, process evaluation, impact evaluation, and outcome evaluation. Although it lists these steps as going counterclockwise, in reality the evaluation steps are occurring at the same time as steps one through four. So as you are going through the planning process, <clears throat> from the very beginning, you will be looking at outcome evaluation, impact evaluation, and process evaluation. So what does this mean in relationship to the steps? The first item is the needs assessment. The needs assessment is based on the quality of life, and that's given to us by Healthy People 2020, and soon we will be seeing Healthy People 2030. We're also going to look at epidemiological data from national and state surveys like the Youth Risk Behavior Surveillance Survey and the American College Health Association Survey. We are also are going to collect some of our own data, which would be primary data, about our population and their interests. After we complete our needs assessment, you're going to be creating goals and objectives. The goals are typically given to us by state and national organizations. You will use the needs assessment and those national or state goals to develop your SMART objectives. And in case you've forgotten, SMART means specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. Once we have those SMART objectives, you will be creating your assessment for your final evaluation or your summative evaluation. This is also your impact evaluation. We're going to be looking at what happens after you complete your health fair. Then once we have all of that developed, you create your programming, and during the entire process, you're looking at process, impact, and outcome evaluation. The next model means UBD, or uni um, Understanding by Design. And understanding by design is logical because it helps you plan backwards to the, to the beginning. So in the first thing we're going to do in this one is very similar to Precede Proceed, and that is the first thing you do is identify desired results. Then you determine what is acceptable evidence to prove that your program was successful. And then after you have all of that planned, then you let plan your learning experiences and instruction. So this means in relationship to the steps of planning a program, identifying your desired results. When you do that, you'll be working on your needs assessment, collecting primary, secondary data. And then you're going to look at what does the end look like? What are my goals, objectives? It's the epidemiology and quality of life in the pre-seed, proceed model. 
The second thing we're going to do in this model is determine acceptable evidence. So once we've gotten our needs assessment goals and objectives, we will be creating assessments or evaluations to collect data. The third item is uh, learning experiences and instruction, and that's where we actually plan the exact activities and strategies we're going to use to implement at the health fair. And again, we'll be evaluating the process throughout. The next item, or the next model, is called backward mapping. And in a backward mapping, it's very similar to the other two in that we start with the end. The first thing we look at is the learning outcomes for the curriculum. Then we determine how we're going to assess the outcomes. And then we go to teaching and learning activities. Once we implement those teaching and learning activities, if you follow the arrow at the bottom of the slide, it takes us back to the intended outcomes. And that means after we're finished, did we hit the desired outcomes? So what does this mean in regards to planning programming? The intended outcomes in this model match our needs assessment, our primary secondary data. It's what does the end look like? What are the goals and objectives? The epidemiology and quality of life. The assessment regime is where we are creating assessments and evaluations to collect data to prove if we hit our outcomes. Then our teaching and learning activities are created, and that would uh, finalize the program planning process. And again, you will be evaluating throughout. If we take backward mapping one step further, we're actually going to use it in planning the health fair. When we talk about the health fair <clears throat> and we start with the end, the end is when is the health fair, what needs to be done, and we work backwards from that end date. So if the health fair were April 7th, what needs to be done by April 1st, what needs to be done by March 20th, what needs to be done by March 15th, etc. The reason why we plan using these models is that it does several different items. First, it causes alignment. When you plan by starting at the end, whether you're using Pre-C, Proceed, UBD, or backward mapping, you actually align everything in your program. When you align everything in your program, your program has purpose and meaning. When you use these types of models, you will have success because you'll be able to prove success. Because everything's aligned, you're more likely to be successful. And when you have success, it means that your program is focused on your outcomes and not activities. Activity-based programming is usually ineffective because it is a series of, not, of activities that are not connected to any purpose or meaning. When you focus your program on outcomes, every single thing you do is focused on what the outcome is supposed to be. That concludes the slideshow. Please keep this in mind throughout the semester as we will continue to come back to it to see where we are in the actual planning process.